If you have ever tried to model plants in Blender, I know how frustrating it could be. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create high quality plants in Blender for free. So before starting, it's really helpful to collect references of the thing that you're gonna model. And for collecting references, you can use the free pure ref software to import all your images at one place. You can download it by following the link in the description. And now open up Blender, delete everything, go to top view and I'm gonna drag and drop an image of a leaf of the plant that I'm gonna model. It's from unsplash.com which provides free images for commercial use. I'm gonna turn down the opacity of the image. Then add a plane and first model the shape of only one leaflet and you'll get the reason in a moment. And don't make it high poly because it'll be so small in the scene. Just block out the shape of the leaflet. 10 seconds later then open up the shaded editor and link a material to that and add an image texture and choose the image that we added and plug it into the image socket open up a new workspace change that to uv editor then go to edit mode and unwrap the model by pressing u and selecting project from view then place the uvs correctly on the leaf texture you can hover the mouse over the UV editor and press Ctrl space to zoom into full screen. And before scaling the UVs, change the transform pivot point to median point by pressing the period key so that it uses the center point of our object to scale the UVs. And the reason for I told you to only model one leaflet is because it's easy to unwrap. And you can zoom in the viewport and see where your mesh is and place the UVs correctly on the leaf texture. You can hold down the shift key while moving for precise movements. So when you have done unwrapping, go to options and enable the correct face attributes option. And now when you transform the mesh, the UVs will automatically update. And you don't need to unwrap it again. And now you can duplicate these faces to create all the other remaining leaves. A little longer than a few minutes later. Then for the leaf branch, I'm gonna add a curve and rotate that 90 degrees on the Z axis. Then go to edit mode and move the vertices so it lines up with the leaves. And to give thickness to the curve, go to object data properties and increase the depth a little bit. And now you can go to edit mode and select any vertex that you want. Then press Alt S to change the thickness of the curve. And if the leaves aren't sticking to the branch, you can go to edit mode and move the vertices. I'm gonna hide this image because we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna add a curve modifier to the leaf and choose the curve that we made to be the target object. And when you add a curve modifier, it moves to the wrong position. So you have to move that where it was. And the leaf is also squashed on the x-axis and I was wondering why is it happening and how to fix that. Then I figured out that when you change the scale of the curve by pressing Alt S, the leaf on which we added the curve modifier also gets affected. And the way to fix that is to simply select the curve then go to object data properties and there's an option called curve deform. And by default, the radius option is checked on, so we have to turn that off. And now if we change the scale of our curve, the scale of our leaf won't be affected. And now we can deform the leaf by transforming the curve. And when we add the curve modifier to the leaf, the leaves are moved from their original position. So we have to go to edit mode and move the leaves closer to the branch. And to see what the curve modifier is doing in edit mode, we have to enable these two options in the curve modifier. And before moving the leaves, turn off the correct face attributes option so that the UVs don't change because we have unwrapped the UVs before. And the leaves of palm aren't flat like this. They are curved something like this. So to make the leaves curved like this, I'm gonna add a plane and transform that into a curved shape like this. You can press Ctrl B to bevel the edges. 
Then I'm gonna add a shrink wrap modifier to the leaf and choose the target to be the plane that we modeled. And in a nutshell, the shrink wrap modifier works like this. I'm gonna change the viewport display of our plane to wires so that we can see what we are doing. Then I'm going to edit mode and scale it up on the X axis and scale it down a little bit. Then I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and we don't want this rounded edge. So to sharpen that, I'm going to edit mode and bevel the edges. Then I'm gonna move this plane down on the stem. And I'm going to edit mode and tweak the mesh a little bit until it looks good to me. And if we transform the curve, the leaf is still sticking to the plane. And that's because we added the shrink wrap modifier after the curve modifier. So move the shrink wrap modifier before the curve modifier. And as soon as we do that, more than the half our leaf isn't visible. And that's because when we added the curve modifier, the leaf was moved from its original position. And now if you hide the modifiers, you can see where the leaf is. And now move the plane where the leaf is. And also decrease down the level of subdivision surface modifier down to 1. And now if we unhide the modifiers, the leaf remains curved and also we can deform it by using the curve. And one thing we have to do that is when we move the branch, the leaf doesn't follow that. And we can just parent the leaf and the plane to the branch and nothing seems wrong. But when you move the last vertex of the curve, something really weird happens. And this only happens when I parent the leaf to the branch. So I'm gonna undo the actions. And the way I fix that is to add an empty at the start of the curve. Then parent everything to the empty. And now you can move the empty to move everything and we didn't need to parent the leaf to the branch and that should fix the problem. And now duplicate everything and make a few variations. The more variations you make the better the plant will be. And now you can select the leaf, go to edit mode and duplicate, move and rotate the faces. But before doing that, turn off the correct face attributes option so that the UVs don't change because we have unwrapped them before. And if your leaf clips off like this, it should be happening because this plane couldn't cover the leaf. And you can see that if we hide the curve modifier. So go to edit mode and make the plane longer so that it covers the leaf. And it should fix the problem. And now you can unhide the curve modifier. And while you are editing the mesh in edit mode, you can disable this option so you can't see what the shrink wrap modifier is doing in edit mode. You can also edit this plane to give the leaf a little bit of variation. A few moments later. And here are a few variations that I've made. Then I'm gonna select the plane and hide its visibility for the renders because we don't want to render that. I'm also gonna change its viewport visibility to bounds so it's a bit cleaner. And now do the same for these planes also. And if there are any flipped normals, we should fix them because they can cause some issues in shading. We can see the flipped normals by enabling this face orientation option. And now go to edit mode and select these red ones and press Ctrl Shift N to recalculate the normals. And if nothing happens, try disabling the unside option. And I've also made a pot with some soil. The pot is pretty easy, just basic modeling with a solidifying and a bevel modifier. And for the soil, I duplicated this edge loop and separated it by selection. Then I removed all the modifiers. Now select the circle, go to edit mode, press Ctrl F and choose grid fill to fill the circle with nice quads. Set the origin to geometry. 
add a subdivision surface modifier of level 2 and then add a displacement modifier and make a new texture. Then go to the texture properties and open the displacement texture. Then again add a subdivision modifier but of level 1 and after the displacement modifier to make the mesh smooth. I am gonna decrease down the medieval of my displacement modifier. Then go to the UV editor and select the displacement texture. Then unwrap the UVs and scale them down. Then in the displacement modifier change the coordinates to UV map and select the UV map that we unwrapped. Then decrease down the strength of the displacement modifier to around 0.5. Then I'm gonna delete this bad drawing. And now the only thing left to do is to put all these things together to make a plant. And now I'm duplicating, moving and rotating the leaves and also editing the curves by using proportional editing which is a way of transforming elements such as vertices while having that transformation affect other vertices within a given range and you can increase or decrease the range by using the scroll wheel. And one thing to keep in mind is that you can make your curve as long as you want but your leaf will be of the same length so keep your curve as long as your leaf is and now just to make your plant you can use references to see how the plant is Moments later. and it's looking great and one thing i forgot to tell you is that you should keep your models to a real world scale so what I'd like to do now is to go to the preferences and enable the rigify add-on. And now we can add a human armature and it's too small. But actually our plant is too huge and I added this human to compare the size. It's 1.98 meters tall and I found that parallel palms are 6 feet tall. So I'm gonna open up my calculator. Then click on these three lines and you've got a whole bunch of options but what we need is this converter length option. I'm gonna set this one to feet and this one to meters and now you can enter 6 and it converts that to 1.82 meters. Now I'm gonna scale down my human to 1.82 meters. Then I'm gonna move that over here. Now press Ctrl I to select the inverse. Change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor and scale down everything until it's roughly about the height of this human. And now our plant is 1.8 meters tall. Now I'm gonna delete this human because we don't need it. And it's looking awesome. And in the next part, I'll show you how you can create the shaders. And after that, I'll also show you how you can create these two plants. And if you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the bell down below so you won't miss any of my new videos. I'll be back.